What is up you guys? Welcome back. For anyone new here, my name is Jess. I create videos around F-words I'm passionate about and festivals is one of my number one F-words here on this channel. If you love F-words or festivals or any of the other F-words I talk about, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm really happy to have you here with me. Now today, I thought it would be really important to kind of go over 10 tips to keep each other safe this festival season. Of course, we still have festivals that are postponing, which is kind of sad, but at the same time and in that same breath, there's still festivals that are happening. And with so much time off from festivals this past year because of the coronavirus, I really think that we need to remind ourselves how to keep each other safe. We need to be looking out for one another, especially if you're a festival goer or a raver, uh, this one's for you. So let's get into it right now. Okay, tip number one, extremely obvious. Everyone already knows this, but just in case you don't, hydrate and drink water. Yay! Bring your camel back, bring your vibration pack, bring your lunch box, whatever your hydration pack of choice is, make sure you are staying hydrated at the festival. Now, you also want to make sure you're staying hydrated pre and post festival. It's extremely important. I mean, I know that I have lacked at exercising and drinking water during this whole quarantine. So I know I'm not the only one. And if you have been working out and doing the damn thing, I'm so proud of you. I can't wait to get back into it. I've been like kind of lazy, but it's just super important to stay hydrated. Your body is not used to walking, dancing, shuffling, and doing all these things that we haven't been doing in quite some time. So just make sure that you're drinking water, make sure that you have your friends drinking water, and just make sure you know your limits, which leads me into my next tip. The next tip is listen to your body. Now, I cannot stress this enough, and maybe it's because I'm a longtime festival goer and I have been attending festivals for so long that I know to listen to my body now. So what do I mean by that is rest when you need to. That means sleep when you need to. Power naps are your friends, but if you need more than a power nap, just do it. I'm telling you, you will have an opportunity to see that artist again. You will have an opportunity to go to that panel talk you wanted to see at another festival. It happens a lot where we pressure ourselves to have this schedule, have this festival schedule, run to this stage, go to this stage, have to be in at this time. And sometimes it can be really draining. And so throughout the years, what I've learned best is really to just listen to my body when it needs rest. And to be perfectly honest with you, sometimes it really works out to your benefit. So what I mean by that is sometimes I have fallen asleep through one of my favorite artist sets that I've wanted to see. I was so upset. And then I ended up catching another set that ended up being absolutely mind-blowing that I probably maybe wouldn't have made if I chose to stay up and push myself. So just something to keep in mind, just make sure you're taking care of yourself pre-festival, but at the festival itself, just know that sometimes if you have a missed opportunity, it leads to a better opportunity. On to tip three, it is wear earplugs. Now, too many people I know, including myself, have kind of disregarded this really important safety tip. Now, I use Zound earplugs. I do have a discount code with them. It's F word if you wanna use it for 10% off. However, I did check the other day and it seemed to be deactivated. I don't know if because it hasn't been used in so long. So I'm trying to work on getting that back for you. But if not, I know that Emma Capotis and Vibe with Aid have a discount code so you can always use theirs. I don't care whose discount code you use, just please protect your ears because my ears are shot from going to live music events for so long. I definitely have damaged my hearing throughout the years of going to shows, going to clubs, going to festivals without hearing protection. And now like I can honestly say that I understand why it's so important. And unfortunately it's a little too late. So if you haven't started yet, look into earplugs. Like I said, I like the Zound. They sound like you don't even have them in, but yes, please just protect your hearing. It will be so worth it in the long run. Okay, up next for our next tip is wear sunscreen. <laughs> Protect your skin, you guys. Lots of us have been quarantined inside, not going out as frequently as we used to. Even if it was like during the winter, majority of quarantine was during the winter, like, or even if you're like from a warmer area place, like, I don't know, like people just weren't outside as much. So 
your skin is gonna be super sensitive to the sun. Like even babysitting these past couple weeks, I noticed that I've gotten like slight sunburn on my face just because like I'm just not used to being outside anymore. I'm not used to spending time at the beach all summer. Like everyone was quarantined for so long. So just protect your skin. You do not wanna be sunburned. That's the last thing that you want at a festival. You won't be able to sit down. Your ass is gonna hurt. Your thighs are gonna hurt. Anyone that touches you or bumps into you, it's gonna just hurt. Just don't forget sunscreen, all right? Just protect your skin so you could have a great time. The last tip, which all these tips kind of have to do with taking care of you and your body, but the last tip for this is wear a mask. Now, I know this is a very sensitive topic. I know that a lot of people that are fully vaccinated, like don't really wear masks. And I, I know there's just a lot of logistics when it comes down to all this. And I'm not trying to push anyone's buttons here. But for me personally, when I go to an event, I'm going to be fully vaccinated. And I am going to wear a mask if I'm in a large crowd. Now, if I'm towards the back, and I'm with the group of people I went with, there's a chance that I will take my mask off. But I think what people need to remember is that just because you're vaccinated, it doesn't mean that you were not capable of getting this virus, you still can and then you can pass it along to other people that haven't had the opportunity to get vaccinated. So I just think it's something to keep in the back of your mind. I just think that especially if you haven't been vaccinated or if you're an anti-vaxxer or you don't believe in COVID, like just try to remember like if we want live events to come back how they were and to be doing all the hugging and, and, and you know, candy trading and everything that's involved with festivals, you know, being touchy feely, dancing, all that stuff, all that feel good stuff. Just like remember, like everyone has different opinions about this and just kind of be empathetic if, if that's like what I'm trying to say, you know, like just try to be mindful. Like if there's a large crowd, like maybe try to do your part and just wear a mask. All right, for these next couple tips, I'm gonna be talking about harm reduction. Now, I really wanna make it perfectly clear that I am not a licensed professional. I am not promoting you to use drugs, but what I am promoting is that if you choose to use drugs, please test your drugs. It is so, so important that we don't have any more deaths in our community from accidental overdoses and stuff like that. Now, I'm a big advocate for harm reduction. I believe that it's something that should be offered at US festivals. Unfortunately, there are certain laws in place like the Rave Act that prevents harm reduction companies from being on site and providing information to festival goers. Now, that's not the case for all festivals, but for most festivals in the United States, that is the case. And it's really upsetting to me because I just feel like we are at a point in society where we need to be on the same page as the rest of the world when it comes to psychedelic drug use. So I just wanted to give you some recommendations as far as like two parts here. So basically, if you're gonna test your drugs, you can go to dancesafe.org. They are a nonprofit organization. So if you buy test kits from them, they are going to put that money back into research for harm reduction. There's also another company called Bunk Police. Now, I'm not exactly sure if they are a nonprofit org, but they also sell test kits as well. Both of these companies offer information on their websites. They offer information on how to use the drug testing kits, and they also both sell separate strips for fentanyl testing. So definitely get those because if you are a user for cocaine, ketamine, fentanyl unfortunately is getting placed into these drugs and it's absolutely deadly. And you don't want to just be trying to test to make sure something's pure or not. You also want to get these separate fentanyl test strips. Now, I just want to bring this to light because it's just a part of festival culture and I just want everyone to be safe. I just I just can't stress enough like how important it is to make sure you're testing your drugs. Now the part two of this harm reduction part of this video is educate yourself. So there are some really great companies out there that you can learn from and get brochures about how to basically help someone through a hard psychedelic trip. Now with the return of festivals, I'm a little concerned that people are just gonna come back, they're gonna wanna try things, they're gonna wanna experiment with things that they haven't tried with, and maybe during this whole quarantine, they had some trauma they were processing, and then if they have a trip, they might end up having a experience that they weren't expecting. So 
There's two organizations that I think you should really look into, and that is MAPS and the Zendo Project. So MAPS, just in case you are unfamiliar, they are an organization that has been around since 1986, and they basically are a leader in research, and they're on a mission to create safe and legal opportunities for psychedelic medicine in our society. So they've worked a lot with MDMA, they've been working with ketamine, they work a lot with these psychedelic substances with people that are veterans, that have PTSD, things like that. So like they do a lot of testing to try to make psychedelic drug use legal because they think it's beneficial for society. And you know, I'm one of those people that I feel like it probably would be if we didn't have this whole war on drugs in the United States. There's actually a bunch of YouTube channels that talk about psychedelic drugs and all things like that that you can check out. I'm just here to say, look into MAPS. They have some really great resources. And one of those other resources is the Zendo Project that I have talked about previously here on my channel. Now, Zendo Project is a company or organization rather that they will be at events like Burning Man, Envision, a lot of transformational events they will be at, usually near the medical tent or they'll have their own kind of tent and or temple area for you to visit, but they basically help people through maybe a psychedelic trip or experience that they weren't expecting. And they have four principles that I want to talk about so that you can kind of learn in case you're with someone that's having one of these experiences. Their four harm reduction principles are having a safe space, sitting, not guiding, through, not down, and difficult, not bad. So what the Zendo Project is trying to do is kind of have a harm reduction education program to support communities and help inform people that are having difficult psychedelic experiences and hopefully try to have opportunities from these experiences that we can learn and grow from. So they have a bunch of brochures and things on their website that you can check out. I will link all their links in the description below, but I just think it's extremely important to be educating ourselves about these things and there's also a podcast I love listening to with Eamon Armstrong, Life is a Festival, and he has a lot of guests from these organizations on his podcast. It's absolutely amazing podcast. He is an amazing human, and so that's pretty much my spiel on all that. Let's get into the next tip. All right, so these next tips kind of have to do with the venue and your valuables. So first things first, know your exit. So you might be thinking, oh, this is the festival I've never been to before. One of my rules of thumb, if I'm going to a new festival that I haven't been to is try to get a lay of the land. Now that might be a little harder if it's a larger scale festival where it takes you 15 to 20 minutes to get across the venue. Of course, you're not gonna be trying to walk around for an hour figuring out where all your exits are and the stages are and stuff like that. But as you go through this venue, understand where you are, understand your surroundings, know where your exits are. This goes for just anywhere, even a hotel you're staying in if you're not camping. Maybe, you know, the city or club that you're in, in particular, just kind of know your way around. And if you don't know your way around, at least just know where your exit is. Now, I'm not trying to freak anyone out. I'm just saying in today's society with things opening back up, I just like really want you to be prepared because people that are prepared usually are calmer in, in situations where they might be in danger. So just kind of know your lay of the land and know where you can go for help. It's really important. Look at the festival map, stuff like that. Okay, so up next with the venue is your valuables, right? Make sure that you are protecting your valuables. Uh, people unfortunately make a living off of festivals. They come, they steal phones, they steal money, they steal camera gear, they, they steal what they can. Now, luckily I have not, knock on wood, where's wood, do I have wood? <laughs> I have not had an experience of theft and I've been to festivals globally and domestically 
all around the world. And luckily I have not dealt with anything like that, but I know many people that have unfortunately, and it's just an unfortunate situation. So just protect your gear. So one of my biggest tips for Festival Essentials is have a fanny pack. And I'm gonna show you, this is my fanny pack here. And I have a bunch of different fanny packs. This is my custom F word one by Betsky's Boutique. All my fanny packs are by her, but the point is, is there's a zipper on the back. So I usually have anything super important in there so that it's right up against my body. There's no way anyone is getting that. There's also companies like the Lunchbox that create theft proof hydration packs where all of their uh, material is, is, you know, you can't cut through it and the zippers are on the back of your back so that it's against your body. Basically there are theft proof bags out there that you might want to consider so that you can keep your valuables safe. So obviously this is not really like a huge safety tip, but it could really ruin your festival experience if you go through something like this. So yeah, just be mindful of, you know, your surroundings and where your val valuables are and keep them on your person. All right, and this is the last tip and it's kind of goes off of people that make money off festivals. Now, besides people that steal, also there are law enforcement that make money off of festival goers. When they make arrests, they make a lot of money in fees and they make a lot of money for their community if they get arrests. So my tip is just don't be stupid guys, all right? If you are trying to take something in that you're not supposed to have, make sure you go to a porta potty. Make sure you are in a closed area before you move anything, okay? It's just some advice. Just be safe. Just, you know, understand your surroundings. Don't get in and, you know, start moving things around. Just go to a stage, go to a porta potty, go somewhere enclosed, and be on your merry way, if you know what I'm saying. So that is my final tip. I hope you get what I'm saying. I really hope this video was so helpful. It's just a little reminder because we're all a little rusty. You know what I'm saying? Like even me, I've been going to festivals for like 10 years. And when I was coming up with this video, I was like, oh yeah, that, oh yeah, that, oh yeah. Gotta do all that, you know? So I just really want festival goers to learn as much as possible and help each other as much as possible. So I hope that you'll share this video with someone that you think will enjoy it. And please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I talk about F words here on my channel that I'm passionate about. Of course, festivals is like one of my number ones. It's like my baby. I love them so much. Uh, yeah, and I will see you in the next video. You could also DM me on Instagram. I say that all the time. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments or DM me on Instagram. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.